all these years later, it's still nostalgic to me. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Now, admittedly, I actually did a marathon of these movies or almost five years ago and now that I've moved into my new place so I thought that it would be cool to do this again this might be a tradition I do now also I want to make one note this has nothing to do with anything that's going on with Rowling right now I'm uh, so far behind in all the hoobity hoobity that's happening with her I'm literally just talking about these movies and the books as they are I don't care what she has done since because in all honesty she's done some stuff before all of this woo going on right now that i did not agree with so i have more so just said once she finished the seventh book that's it that's all the contribution she has done to this series that's where we're going to go on from this uh, review here starting off with Philosopher's Stone. I love this movie. Yes, there's some bad acting Yes, there is some hokey childish Chris Columbus kind of stereotype parts. However, this film did a fantastic job Doing its primary goal, which was world building this film made me want to go to Hogwarts this film made me want to get my letter when I was a kid. Until about the fifth book, I was a die-hard Harry Potter fan. I loved the series, I loved the movies, I lived and breathed it. I had toys, I had games. The chess board that was in this film, I had a toy replica of it, even though it wasn't really good at chess. This series started off strong in terms of establishing something to fans of the novel series as well as those who were not well versed with the series or didn't know anything about the books at all. This film did a fantastic job exploring and introducing a new world to people and that is the greatest accomplishment that this film does because while there is a great story with Harry meeting new friends, being the boy who lived and coming to find his own courage and finding his own destiny, I still say that the world building is the best part, not just in terms of the narrative but also in the production design. There is so much put into this film from the castles to the sets to the production design in terms of like the special areas like the dungeons, the devil snares, Diagon Alley, the Quidditch field, everything was so well established in this film. And I think that's because all of the really big name expensive actors are so little in this film. They're, they don't have as big parts. Like, re-watching this, I didn't realize how little Richard Harris is actually in this movie. He's so non-committal to it that I swear he's reading lines with Harry at the end of the film. I swear every time his eyes are like darting off to the right, he's like, I think this guy's reading the script. But that's not to say that this film wasn't a massive challenge. I remember reading that Chris Columbus said that he had to have three cameras set up at all times because the kids sometimes just couldn't get lines right. And it's really hard trying to do a two hour plus film with 11 and 12 year olds. They would use scenes that if two of them got it right and one of them got it wrong, they could use footage from the two other cameras. But also by doing a three camera setup, you're not giving yourself really any room to maneuver. You're not really giving any room to do any sort of cool blocking or anything above the bare essentials, which is what was thankfully changed for the third film. Also speaking of world building, John Williams' score is fantastic. It is iconic. Something to me that really stands out for Harry Potter is while J.K. Rowling wrote the world, built the world with her mind, John Williams gave it life with his theme. The dude's done it for decades now, but he hits it out of the park once again like it's nobody's business as well as all the accompanying music that's in this film it's just it's just beautiful to hear anytime i hear that i'm instantly taken back to harry potter and chamber of secrets for the gamecube that is one of my favorite video games of all time speaking of which i'm actually going to probably put a link to a guy who reviewed the harry potter and the chamber of secrets game at the end of this video he reviewed all of the video games so you should check this guy out chris bond 22 i believe anyways but then going back to the actors some of the acting's not the greatest. Radcliffe does have good moments in this film, particularly when he's looking at the mirror and he's seeing his parents. I would say that's his best bit of acting in this whole film. Ron, or Rupert Grint, I would say his best bit of acting is during the chess game because we see Ron, honestly, actually, this is probably Ron's most useful 
part in the entire series. I hate to kind of shit talk on Ron, but after the first book, I thought that his presence, his purpose in the narrative just became more and more pointless to the point where in the seventh book, I was just like, get the fuck out of here, Ron. You're just useless. I feel that he doesn't do anything at the same level aside from maybe just coming back after his hissy fit in the seventh book than sacrificing himself in the game of chess so that they can stop an evil person. I think that is Ron's best moment, and that's also Rupert Grint's part. However, Emma Watson, she's bad. It's a kid actor. I couldn't do any better. However, she's bad in this movie. She's a very bad child act. I've always felt this about Emma Watson. She does get better in the series, don't get me wrong, but I find that Emma Watson's just skill as an actor is not as good as the roles that she's been given. I feel that she's been riding on the Hermione coattails for quite some time. I would say her best part in the film is when she says, I'm going to bed before you get us killed or worse, expelled. But otherwise, every time she talks, I'm like, Ew. But honestly, the Harry Potter series was my bread and butter, my lifeblood when I was a kid. I still have the full screen uh, DVD copy here. Just to show you the age of it, for any of you who still have these, you'll know that they flipped up and they were giant eco-wastes of cardboard. But does anyone remember going through all the bonus features on the second disc? I remember finding all of the secrets. If you want a great example of age technology in terms of media viewing and games and special features, I would really suggest you find the DVD copy or one of the originals of Harry Potter and you just go through the bonus features because holy shit, some shit has aged. But otherwise, I very much love the Philosopher's Stone. It has problems, it has issues, it is a bit long, but at the same time, it is also pretty much incorporating almost every single bit of the book. The only two big omissions that I can think of are Jeeves or Peeves, the ghost who's the asshole, as well as one of the challenges towards the Philosopher's Stone being the potion challenge or whatever the hell it was. Also, I've always been confused as to why they did a Philosopher's Stone and a Sorcerer's Stone release. I think it's because Americans couldn't say philosophers or they thought that Americans would be able to say philosophers, so they said sorcerers even though the two kind of mean two different things. But in the end, I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone a 5 out of 7. It's fun, it's a childhood memory to me. I remember going to see the first four films in theaters with my mum and just having a grand old time. Once we get past the fourth film though, I have a very interesting story to tell about that. But either way guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And I'll be continuing on with this series with Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. My favorite one. The last time I checked. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.